this time you seem to be much more positively upbeat as a firm. Is there a change in attitude there? Well, no, I think the, uh, the, uh, we just thought it was a very timely, uh, as you may know, we ran some uh, commercials in the World Series last night where uh, Jack yeah, We Lay told them not to play tonight, so... Yeah, they're going to play tonight, that's, exactly, that's right. But nevertheless, we, yes, we are very bullish on American, American corporations, and this is a story we're trying to get across. But you also sell bonds. The bond market had a terrific rally this week yeah. against the stock market. That's should, right. Should people sell stocks and buy bonds? Uh, yeah, there were some, yes, there were people uh, selling stocks and buying bonds. As a matter of fact, the bond markets uh, were, uh, had, had such a, uh, such a decline that there were some very good uh, buying opportunities, particularly in long-term bonds, and that seemed to work out well. Which looks better to you right now? I think it's a balanced approach, and I think each, each individual investor has to look at his own situation. If you're a conservative, you ought to have a balanced portfolio. And you can get some good long-term bond purchases and certainly get some very attractive long-term common stock purchases. A balanced portfolio in an unbalanced market. In an unbalanced market. This is the time to make it balanced. Steve, what's your portfolio look like now, and what would your advice be? Well, my advice would be to um, uh, emphasize bonds at the current time relative to common stocks, and uh, one reason for that is uh, I believe that the decline in stock prices that we have had uh, in the last several weeks will bring about a weaker economy later this year and early next year, and that will initially be to the advantage uh, of the bond market. Explain how that will occur. The decline in stock prices we have had since August of this year is about a trillion dollars, and that is net worth to the consumer. Consumer spending should be lower to the extent their net worth has been reduced and lower consumer spending will bring about a weaker economy. How would you answer the question I gave Bill? In terms of a balanced portfolio? Yes. We would now have approximately 30 percent of a balanced portfolio in short-term debt instruments, call that two-year U.S. governments. We would have 30 percent of the portfolio um, in long-term government bonds, which for us is the maximum representation, and we would have our minimum representation now 40 percent in common stocks. The Federal Reserve Board, through its chairman, Alan Greenspan, indicated this week that it might be shifting emphasis from worrying about inflation to worrying about recession. Might that change your perspective? No, I think the, the concerns about recession um, uh, may be appropriate given what has happened to uh, common stock values, and I think that Mr. Greenspan and his colleagues would be well served uh, watching the economy very carefully, watching how consumer spending responds <coughs> in the months ahead to the decline in common stocks since August of this year. John Templeton, you were one of the earliest global investors. The markets seem to be tightly interlinked this week. One falls, they all fall. Was there any safety, safety and diversification this week? Some, but not as much in the old days when economies were more separate. Uh, we have found that by being world diversified, there, we have been able to make more, uh, been able to do better than the market in uh, bear markets, much better than in bull markets, and that's still true this week also. Barely two months ago, you were here with me, and you were totally optimistic about the future. Have you changed that attitude a little? No. Lewis, the out outlook is so wonderful that none of us really understand. Um, all the world is progressing more and more rapidly. Half of all that's been discovered in science is in the last 50 years, half of all discovered in medicines in the last 20 years. There are 10 times as many shareholders now as there were 40 years ago. Uh, pension funds, uh, individual retirement accounts are all growing so rapidly, and the, sh the quantity of shares available to buy is shrinking so that in the long run, share prices are likely to be much higher than they've ever seen before. You and I may believe that, but what do you tell the individual who sees a market crashing the way this one's crashed, thinks he's at the mercy of computers and big money managers? How can he have any assurance that this is a reasonable way to prepare for one's future? By looking at history, there's never been a time when you could have invested when, never in the last 40 years been a time when you could have invested that you, on common stocks that you wouldn't have made money over a five-year period. Or to say it differently, uh, the great bull market did end two months ago on August 25th. We are already now well into a bear market, but it's possible the bear market has already ended. But if it hasn't ended yet, the chances are it will end by the end of next year. So all of us should start focusing on when can we get in in order to share in the next bull market. Would you race to buy stocks Monday morning or would you wait and let this market settle? I would wait and let this market settle. 
we have not increased our total holdings of common stocks this week, and it may be several weeks before we do. And there, unfortunately, we do have to stop. I want to thank these three distinguished gentlemen, Bill Schreier, Steve Einhorn, John Templeton, for bringing us their wisdom tonight. They didn't agree, but that's what makes markets. Neither they nor any other human, not even a newsletter writer or a computer analyst, can tell us precisely how low or how high this market will go. Those who pretend otherwise turn out eventually and invariably to be wearing only the emperor's new clothes, and not very elegantly either. Happily, though, we don't have to know the unknowable to make money as long-term, sensible, and patient investors who believe that whatever our political and economic problems, America is still a fine and resilient and promising country and that we want to own a part of its future. That's how I see it, however bruised and battered most of us are feeling tonight. And we'll be back next week to what passes for normal around here, tracking America's shaken financial present, but more important, keeping faith with its future and going along for the ride. I hope you'll join me on that ride. Meanwhile, this has been Wall Street Week. I'm Louis Rukeyser. Good night. Wall Street Week with Louis Rukeyser has been brought to you by public television stations, by Hanson Trust, a $10 billion transatlantic company with 23 consecutive years of growth in earnings and dividends by providing essential goods and services, by Prudential Beach Securities, the investment firm with rock-solid resources that's leading the way to the future for investors, and by Primerica, the new name in financial services and specialty retailing, a company with the resources to fund growth for tomorrow, Primerica, a name to remember. Stay tuned for Upstairs Downstairs, next here on Channel 17, TV worth watching. For a printed transcript of this program, send $3 to Transcripts. Wall Street Week, Owings Mills, Maryland, 21117. That's $3 to Transcripts. Wall Street Week, Owings Mills, Maryland, 21117. Maryland residents, please add 15 cents sales tax. Wall Street Week transcripts are also available to subscribers of the Dow Jones News Retrieval Service. Wall Street Week with Louis Rukeyser is produced by Maryland Public Television, which is solely responsible for its content. <laughs>